this tutorial, we're going to walk through a step-by-step -step guide of building a cartoon character from scratch in Photoshop and watch it come to life as a webcam controlled puppet in Character Animator. I'll start by making a 3000 by 3000 new project in Photoshop. I generally keep my Photoshop characters big, so I have the most flexibility later on if I want to do a close-up or I'm working in a higher resolution. First, let's create three groups to form the basic structure for our puppet. I'll call the main one my character's name, let's just call him Max. Inside that, I'll make two more groups, head and body. Inside the head, I'll create a new layer and make a blue circle as my head background. Once that's done, I'll make one more layer, select the pin tool, make sure it's set to shape, and put a single dot on the bottom of the head where the neck would be. I'll rename this to origin, which tells Character Animator this is where I want the head to pivot. If I imported this into a Character Animator scene right now, I'd see a big circle that follows my head movements. So now that I know head tracking is already working, it's time to add some details. Back to Photoshop, let's make a new group inside head and call it right eye. Now I'll make a layer inside there with a white circle and call it right eyeball. I'll duplicate that layer, make it smaller and black and call that right pupil. And then I'll make one more layer with just a straight line running across the eye and call it right blink. If I go into Character Animator now, I'll see an eye following my head, but the pupil isn't following where my eye is looking. I need to tell Character Animator that I want those pupils to move independently. So back in Photoshop, I'm going to simply add a plus symbol in front of the right pupil layer name. Plus just means we want this layer or group to move on its own. We call this warp independently. If I go into the puppet panel in Character Animator and select the right pupil, notice that over in the properties, the warp independently box is checked. Plus symbol, warp independently checkbox, it's the same thing. Now I see my pupil acting like I'd expect. Notice by default, the pupil is constrained to the shape of the eyeball. So feel free to experiment because different shapes and sizes of pupils or eyeballs will react differently. Making another eye is as easy as copying the right eye group, moving it over, and replacing everything right with left. And when we say right or left, we're talking about the character's right or left side. If I test it in Character Animator, we're still looking good. Next, let's try a nose. I'll make a new layer, make a blue triangle, and call it nose. Simple enough. For the mouth, since you can have up to 13 different mouth shapes, creating and lining all those up could take a long time. So I'm going to cheat and use another character's mouth instead. I can always modify it later. I'll take this other puppet I have and drag the mouth group over so it's now inside my head group. Check out Character Animator now. Max has a basic face that talks when I talk, thanks to the auto lip sync feature. Pretty cool. Finally, let's add some eyebrows. I'm going to make a new layer, create a blue rectangle, put it above the right eye, and call it right eyebrow. Then I'll duplicate it, move it over the left eye, and call it left eyebrow. I'm not done yet though. Take a look at this guy in Character Animator. My eyebrow movements are actually warping the rest of the head. So why is that happening? Well, remember back to what we did with the pupils. We had to add a plus in front of the layer name to tell Character Animator we wanted them to move on their own. So we have to do the same here. And my recommendation would be to add plus to several groups or layers. My top level max group, the left to right eyebrows, the left and right eye groups, the nose layer, and the mouth group. This will prevent any unwanted warping. Every part can move freely on its own. And as a finishing touch, I'm just going to add some small, slightly darker blue circle ears to the head background as well to help frame the face a little better. I could leave these as their own layers, but I'm going to flatten everything into one main background layer for the head. Okay, so back to Character Animator, I can see that I have all the building blocks of a basic face. And by default, Max is pretty animated. He moves his head side to side, in and out, and has some nice movement in his pupils and eyebrows. But one of the best parts of Character Animator is how customizable you can make things using the face properties on the right. If you roll over any of these, you'll see a tooltip about what they do. And changing these can have dramatic effects on how your character responds. For example, I could scale most of these down to 25% and bump parallax strength up to 500% and look what happens. I get this 2.5D parallax effect with the eyes and nose. There's no right or wrong way to do this, just play around with it in real time until you get the personality and quality of animation that you want. On to the body. Let's make a new layer inside the body group and I'll draw out some basic colored shapes that resemble a neck, shirt, arms, hands, legs, and feet. In my experience, putting the arms in an A position, slanted diagonally downwards, works best. And with that, we're done with Photoshop. But there's obviously still some work to do. When I move my head, it's moving my whole body at the same time. We want to pin this character down, so I'll make sure my body is selected in the puppet panel and use this fix tool, which looks like a thumbtack on both shoes, essentially pinning them down to the ground. If I check out my scene, that looks much better. 
Now, I also want Max's arms to be bendable, so I'll go back to the puppet panel, and with the body group selected again, I'll do two things. Number one, add a draggable handle on top of both hands, which tells Character Animator that I want to be able to drag these points around. And two, draw out sticks to create biceps and forearms, leaving a little room for an elbow. This tells Character Animator that these sticks shouldn't bend, acting more like the bones in our own arms. And that's it. In about five minutes, I've got a basic character up and running. Now that I know the structure works, I can keep adding more details. If you'd like to take a closer look at this puppet, along with some other examples, check out the free example project download in the description below. Good luck, and thanks for watching.